thanks for doing this. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Cool. So, uh, hey, um, what do you, where do you train out of? Okay, so I train out of Birmingham, Alabama, which is actually two hours from where I live. Why? Why so far? Well, I okay, so I, I train at home mostly, but mm. I lived in Daytona Beach, Florida, for a little while. Okay. And, yeah. Um, I had coaches down there that I kept once I moved back to Alabama because I'm from Alabama. Um, gotcha. And after about a year and a half or two, I realized that I needed someone that was closer. Mm-hmm. And there is no one in my area. Um, and I knew Greg, Greg Hasbury through Team Elite, who is my coach now mm-hmm. um, in Birmingham. So what we decided to do was make bi-weekly trips. Okay, so I got you. I'm, I'm pretty decent at holding myself accountable. But, mm-hmm. you know, it's one of those things where I get that extra push, that little bit more motivation. Sure. Um, and he does all of my nutrition and my programs. Thank goodness for social media and things like that because he can just shoot me stuff. Right, right. Yeah, that makes things so much easier because, you know, if, if, they, if those kind of things weren't around, I mean, you would it would just be almost impossible. You'd have to be right there with them. Yeah, yeah. it would. So – Maybe maybe one day we'll end up in Birmingham, <laughs> uh, um, which would be awesome if I was a lot closer. Because yeah. obviously, the closer we get to the Olympia, the more trips that I'm making, which is which is what I'm doing right now. I'm going to see him today. Sure. So, are you are you actually training today? Like, are, are you? Yes. Today you will are? be my last leg session before the Olympia. Okay. So, do you like training in the mornings? Is that usually when you try yeah. to train? You know, with with work and having a little girl, yeah. <laughs> the more the day goes on, um, and I know it's better when you've got a lot of glycogen in your muscles and things like that that you can obtain throughout the day, but my schedule could so easily get messed up. Um, not not necessarily in a bad way, but things could happen throughout the day. So if I could train in the mornings and knock it out, then that's one less stress or worry that I have on my plate. Sure. Well, I'm I'm kind of the same way. I used to be able to train early in the mornings before work, and then my work schedule changed, and I hate going in the afternoon. There's always, like, this push to go home instead of go to the gym. And, you know, I'm a person that enjoys training, but even for me, it's, it's, it's much better in the mornings. Yeah. No, I agree with you completely. And then I'm definitely a people person. Mm-hmm. But when you hit the gym at four thirty, five o'clock in the oh, afternoon, yeah. it's too much, you sure. know, because it's packed. Absolutely. And, um, you know, with where I am right now, like I'm normally on a schedule, so right. people want to chit chat and talk, and I'm like, <laughs> you know, I, I can't. Yeah. Right now. My headphones are on. I'm depleted. Like, yeah. I gotta get my little girl. And, you spend more time during those times. You spend more time talking to people than you do training, and it kind of like disrupts your flow you know when you get oh, yeah. a good pump and then everything and then you have to stop to talk to somebody it's it kind of throws everything off um so my so what's your training uh, like in general are you, do you usually like lift heavier or like do you do more volume yeah we we do lift heavy in my opinion but it is a lot of giant sets um and a lot of reps right now. Obviously, in the off season, the sets come down, the reps come down because we're really trying to, you know, just build. Right. Um, I actually have a difficult time holding muscle. Um, mm-hmm. So if I'm not getting my nutrition in and I'm not training heavy, I could easily lose a little bit of my mass. Yeah. Um, so it's always, in my opinion, an interesting push those last few weeks into a competition because obviously you're. You know, you're trying to get that extra fat loss in, you're increasing the repetition, the calorie count's coming down, but the numbers of, you know, everything's going up rep-wise. So right now, today when I get up here, we'll probably do five sets and all of my numbers will be between like 15 and 20 reps. I see. I see. So so what do you, you said you have trouble maintaining your mass. What are your uh, weights like as for off-season as opposed to on stage? Um, I'm normally about 12 pounds different. Okay, so that's not that's not huge. It's not huge. Um, for some reason, after after I had my little girl, to be honest with you, my metabolism mm-hmm. just it's in my opinion it's out of control. 
Um, oh, really? Which is a good thing. I mean, because it's super, super fast. And just making sure that I'm eating everything that I need to be eating to maintain. Because if yeah. I don't, I'll quickly lose it. I'm I'm naturally a thin person. Right, um, right. You know, I was a gymnast in college and then I cheered in college. So all of that kind of, it in a weird way, required you to be thinner. Sure, sure. Um, I've always, I do have a little bit of genetics. Both of my parents were athletic, so I've always... You know, when I was younger, I could eat pretty much whatever I wanted to eat and still have a little bit of, like, abdominal toning. Yeah. You know, I never I never got real heavy. So, right. even in the off-season, I don't get too far out of competition shape. Right. And so, that I mean, I imagine that's good. You know, you can just probably jump in at any show, like, just like that. I can, and I feel like we've gotten our science down, Pat, that if there is – something a couple of weeks out um that we decide we want to do you know i can i can hop in and do that you know a lot of girls in our division may get a little nervous about routine round and things like that here and there i've not been prepped for you know the cardio work that goes with the routine or the endurance level and um just i mean with all my life and and what i've done throughout my life that's not something that's difficult for me right yeah, that, that that's definitely a benefit. Um, so you you kind of touched on uh, like having an athletic background. Your parents, can you kind of expound on that? Like, what got you into training? Um, like, kind of how do you, you know, what motivates you to continue? Yeah. So, funny story. I got into this when I was living in Daytona. I was working for an insurance company with a bunch of men, and I didn't have any girlfriends. <laughs> and we were eating after work one day, eating some chicken wings and drinking some beer at a wing house, like a Hooters. Uh-huh. Yeah. And the waitress was like, what do you do? And I was like, nothing. Uh-huh. I was like, I go to the gym, but there's no motivation. And right. she's like, well, I'm a bikini competitor and you should come to our gym and meet my coach and this and that yeah. and the other. And at the time that was Michael Matassa down in Daytona. And uh huh. Um, I walk into his gym and he's like, what do you do? And I was like, nothing. I was like, I eat whatever. I drink a couple of beers. I run. I might do some bicep curls. Like, I don't, Yeah. you know, and he's like, well, there's a small show in Melbourne in three weeks. We're going to put you on stage. I was like, okay. Um, (laughs) And so I did. But that's how I ended up. The whole, the whole goal with that was, was for one, to make girlfriends and mm-hmm. two, to have a reason to go to the gym. Because right. when, when you grow up in sports, you know, you're going to practice every day. I did gymnastics at the college level. Um, you kind of lose yourself, you know. I was working, you know, it was a typical eight to five. Mm-hmm. What do you do next, you know? Right, right, um, yeah. And it took off from there, and I absolutely love it. Uh, I did have some very big eating disordered habits um, when I was like 19, 20 years old. Mm -hmm. And this sport has really helped me control that. Um, Because there would be times in my life where I would come out great. I would fall back into it. Um, It's good for my anxiety. Yeah, go ahead. When you say say, uh, like eating disorders, you know, can you, can you specify? Yeah. Like what do you mean? I actually experimented with several different ones. Um, I used to binge eat and I could go through like a Burger King and get three, you know, burger meals large. Mm -hmm. And then I would eat all of them. And then I would take a gallon plastic baggie and um, throw it all up. Oh, man. I did that. Yeah, I did that for a couple of months. And then I would. Once I was trying to get out of that, I would eat food only when I was driving. Mm -hmm. And I would take three or four bites of it, and then I would throw it out the window. Wow. Um, Yeah. Yeah, that's that's an intense uh, disorder to have. It probably messes with your entire self-worth, I'm sure, at a certain point. It did, and a lot of that was brought on just from where I was in the sport and what they wanted you mm-hmm. to look like and be like. And um, I was not mentally tough enough at that time in my life or knowledgeable with what 
I was doing. I was getting information sure. from other girls on what they did to, right. to create a quick fix, you know, and being yeah. young like that and just trying to please your coaches and your elders was, was my, was my focus. Yeah. Um, yeah. So is this from gymnastics, I guess? Yeah. That's what we were talking about. Yeah. It's, it's common, you know, it's a common, um, I guess you could say truism for gymnastics. I was, uh, talking to a girl who's going to be in the figure Olympia and she was modeling and the same thing, went through the same thing prior to, you know, beginning training and everything. Um, yeah. Same eating disorder. It seems like certain, certain sports and certain, you know, lifestyles kind of t- lend themselves to those issues, you know? Right. And it, yeah. it gives me goosebumps and it gives me, Oh, it, it breaks my heart for her. Um, I can actually get hope trying not to i can get emotional about it just yeah you i understand your heart goes out to all of these women that that go through something like that and coach greg knows like when we get this close to a show as well i get what's called body dysmorphia Mm -hmm. so i don't know what i'm looking at in the mirror what i see is not what you see right and um i learned that going to um therapy after I was um, diagnosed with my disordered habits that I would actually, you know, they would lay me down on like a big sheet of paper and draw my outline. Mm -hmm. And then I would have to go back and draw around it how I saw myself. And it's amazing how you mentally beat your own self up because I did. I thought I was fat. I was unworthy. I was um, trash. I was nasty. I was gross. I was... Yeah. not beautiful so yeah you have to control those things because i think a lot of people have those little voices in their head and sure and i don't think it's particular to women um because i think i think men go through the same thing they might just not be it might not just be as known but but especially right. but especially people in athletics you know there's a lot of that going on even with the men so yeah for sure so, um, I agree, I agree with yeah, you. I do. Yeah. Um, so uh, at that point, I guess when you started, it's when you started training, th- is that, is that kind of how that you kind of battled out of that kind of phase? Yes. Uh, which is amazing because I had to learn to get off the scale, um, you know, and not look at the numbers and right. I had to I'm trying to get you out of the sun. Oh no, it's fine. I no really, worries. it took time. Because I then realized that my waist was dropping inches. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I was actually thinner in my midsection. I was carrying more muscle up top. I was carrying um, some beautiful muscle in my legs. Um, you know, and I, I did. Once I realized that I enjoyed what was going into my body, the nutrition, it was also mm-hmm. feeding my brain. Um, and having those confident people behind me to remind me every day what I was doing and where I was going with all of this was great because I mean, I even struggled with, you know, going to the store shopping for clothes, like just because I needed to have a large and a normal female top because my shoulders and my lats were bigger. Right. Didn't necessarily mean I was a large person. Sure. Sure. So, I run, I, yeah. I run into the same situation. Um, because my shoulders are so much bigger, the the clothes that tend to fit me off the rack are meant for people that are kind of larger all around. And so it it, it just it takes a while for me to you know find anything that like would reasonably look decent you know on me. So right. yeah, I can comp- I completely know how you uh, how you feel. <laughs> yeah, um, it's it's funny to hear someone else talk about the same issues that you're going through. So, and I think I think we all do, you know. You, yeah. you but you want people to be vocal about that, and I love that about the sport because we can we can communicate with each other and kind of be like, oh, wait a minute, you go through that too, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You're very, not very much so. Yeah, and I, I'm. It's it's funny that you said that. You're out of people that truly train. You're not alone. But if you really look at the numbers, it, that's a really small percentage of people even you know, go to the gym at all. And then you're talking about somebody who's, you know, training in a hardcore type of way, that's even smaller. So like, we're a very small percentage of the population, you know, so 
not a whole lot of people. I I do think we're a dime a dozen. So, um, yeah, you you know, and you want to inspire those others to get in the gym. You don't want to to steer them away from that. And that's one thing that I remind myself daily is that my actions are going to speak louder than my words. And hopefully somebody will see me as a mom and working full time and having disorders and things like that. But I'm still figuring out how to make it work. Right, right. Yeah, I mean that's a lot of things to um, to juggle. How uh, how old is your is your daughter? Um, she is sorry. Oh, that's okay. No worries. Over. She's no worries. three. She's three. Okay, She's so three. you've been so you've been dealing with um, you know the being a mom and work and training and competing for three years. So that's I mean all of that together for three years. That's I mean that's a considerable amount of time. So kudos to you. <laughs> Thank you. It, it's actually been, it's been very rewarding. So I, I look back at, you know, my physique and my routines from before I had her and I, you know, I kind of sometimes pat myself on the back because they're, they've, they've matured and they've yeah. grown since I've had her, which, you know, you would think it might go the opposite direction. Right, right, right. That, yeah, that tends to be like what you hear, like somebody has a child and then they kind of drop off. They, you don't, which is what I thought was interesting that you said your metabolism increased after the, after your child. Usually you never hear of that happening. It's always the opposite. No. And I think some of that was because, well, I did breastfeed and, you know, a lot of people talk about how that helps with belly fat and things like that. Um, and I kept my nutrition fairly clean while I was mm-hmm. pregnant with her. Um, but, I mean, I'm talking as soon as I had her, I was back on really trying to focus on, you know, hitting my macros, yeah. um, implementing some extra foods here and there because I was breastfeeding, getting back into training. And it literally, it just, it took off. Right. So what do you, um, to back to more of a, competition specific question uh what is your diet looking like now like just uh, what a week out from the olympia are you like completely no carbs at this point or what no we have them which is great um <laughs> last week i have a girlfriend that's competing in phoenix this week so we did uh-huh. like a little mock peak week with her just kind of um to be a teammate and be supportive of her mm-hmm. so we pulled them. We pulled my complex carbohydrates for a good four days and added them back in yesterday. So I actually had six ounces of sweet potato in my meal six um, last night, which was phenomenal. So I feel amazing today. Yeah, that, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Who's the te- who's the teammate that's competing? Haley Haley Lizenba or Lizenby. It's okay. how she says it, but there it's, okay. it's the A is at the end of it. She won her pro card at the Arnold Amateur this year. She oh, competed nice. at the Puerto Rico Pro with me, and so this will be her second show as um, a professional fitness competitor. And she's okay. right here in awesome. Alabama too. So, awesome, I got a yeah, awesome. Nearby. Yeah, you you finally got one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so how, how long does it take you to develop a routine? Is it is it a new team a new routine every year, or yeah, just. Good question. Go so I mm-hmm. normally, um, hang on real quick. I got to make a turn. Yeah. Let me look at my ways out. No, no, no. Go ahead. Yeah, no, definitely be safe. Okay, this is it. I just wanted to make sure I had it right. So I definitely take my, once I get done with the Olympia, I'm literally going to be thinking about the next idea for the routine. Mm-hmm. You know, you and then I'm looking into the Arnold for 2020. Um, I normally put a routine together about 16 to 20 weeks out from a show. I put one together within eight weeks. Um, I do all of my own choreography. Um, my skill set has gotten pretty, pretty mature um, mm-hmm. from the numbers. Everything that I do now is quality over quantity. Um, sure. So I know what I'm, I'm capable of doing at, at any split moment. Um, so... I would say 16 to 20 weeks is extremely comfortable for me. That's what I would okay. like. But I can do it in a short amount of time if needed. Okay. Do you keep the same routine uh, throughout the whole year and then just start a new one the next year? Or how does that how does that work? So I, to be honest with you, I think it depends on your feedback that you get from the judges okay. and how well it performs. 
this year, like I'm keeping my same um, routine from the Arnold and the Puerto Rico Pro this year for the okay. Olympia because it's done so well. And my critiques okay. from it have been pretty decent. Right. Right, so what right. we've done is we've we've cleaned it up a little bit, spruced it up a little bit um, to just give it that extra edge. Mm -hmm. But in the past, I like to do two routines inside the same year just so that you can have something different. You can bring something new to your fans, um, right. new to the judges. So, and two, I think it depends on how many times you compete. If I've done three shows with the same routine in my brain it's time for a new one right right you kind of get tired of it yeah I'm sure. and it's time for yeah. a new outfit it's time for you know because you you want to perform and you want to bring this energy to the crowd and if you've got you know we have some similar followers so once you've seen it three times you're you're wanting to know what what's she going to do next sure sure that excitement factor still has to be there for the right. fans so, um, so with, with fit, fitness being uh, very unique in the, in the realm of competition because it's the only, you know, the only um, division that ha has like a physical performance as well as like a physique. When you, from the physique side, do you, how, so, because to me, it's very similar to figure, like the girls that are doing fitness are very similar to figure. Um, how close are you trying to be in shape like a figure competitor would be? Or is there like a, a, a difference? There is a difference, but uh, well, our posing is identical um, mm -hmm. that we do for comparisons as figure. The shapes are a little different. I do believe with the skill set that we have to do because we're doing so many push-up sequences, we're holding handstands upside down. It's a little bit more difficult for us to bring in that extremely small waistline. Um, mm -hmm. Our shoulders, you'll probably see a little bit more striation instead of that round delt that you would see on the figure girls. Um, right, right. Just from us beating them up with our plyometric work. Um, sure. So it's very similar, but if you do put, you know, if you were to put your first call out of fitness up next to your first call out of figure you would you would definitely tell that there is a difference and you may not understand why um and i think that comes from because a lot of our training is you get that hit style of training mm -hmm. um and everybody's doing some form of plyos because we're flipping we're doing holds we're handstanding right. push up, we're doing splits um you know, and the flexibility, you know, we've all talked about that before, because obviously the more mass you put on, if you don't maintain your flexibility, it can disappear in a heartbeat. Ab um, absolutely. Yeah. So, so I'm, that I'm, I'm struggling with that right now. It's, it's that was, since I've put on more weight, it's got become very difficult to, I, I had to make it a point to stretch and so forth because it just doesn't happen by itself. Right. You're, you're exactly right. So that's something we deal with on a daily basis, but you, you can see the difference, um, but we're all still striving for, you know, that good symmetrical condition shape. So mm -hmm. at our level, you know, even though they don't have the, the comparison round at the NPC level, we're still depleting and bringing in a very conditioned shape for that morning to sure. be as tight as possible and sure. for your symmetry to be on point. And then um, everybody's fueling back up as much as they can before the routine round at night. Right. Okay. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, do you, uh, so how many times have you been to Olympia? This is my first ever Olympia. Your first time. Okay. So what would you consider with it being your first, what would you consider a win um, I often ask this question of the people that I interview or have interviewed for this Olympia. Um, you know, everybody will want to be first, of course, but like, what, what would you be happy with leaving there? To be perfectly honest with you, it's already a win um, because I'm going. I, I've been competing right. as a pro since 2011, and of course, that's always been a goal. Yeah, um, sure. It's definitely a win that I'm I'm doing this at this point in time because we my husband coaches um, football, so we're mm -hmm. right in the middle of his busy season. Um, yeah. So I'm 
and I don't mean this in a bad way, but I'm parenting alone. Um, yeah, yeah. So she, our little girl is my, my priority right now. And so just getting to the Olympia and getting all of my workouts in and getting all of my food cooked and, and practicing my routine already makes it a win. Now, yeah. my goal, I always, I've, I've learned to be vocal about my goals because if I can mm -hmm. be vocal about those, I can hold them accountable and I can really reach for them. Um, my goal is top five. Top I five. Want, yes. I want so badly to be in that first call out and to stand up there um, with a conditioned and symmetrical physique and then go out there and absolutely kill the routine round and get in that top five. I think that's doable. How many girls are in the show? There's 13 of us. Yeah, I mean that's, yeah, there that. Were, there were seventeen doable. on the list, and we've got a yeah. couple that are out. Yeah, I think that's that's doable. Um, so let's say you get your top five. How many shows are you doing next year? You think? Uh, Arnold, I will do every any if the Arnold offers any opportunity for us to travel because they it's been hit or miss every year with fitness on what yeah. they offer through the Arnolds. Um, I will make sure to do each of those. I would love to go back to Puerto Rico, which is a Tim Gardner show, and mm -hmm. try to reclaim my title there. Mm -hmm. And possibly, I, I love Tampa. Tampa is a, an area where I can actually drive from Alabama. It's still a good six and a half, seven hours. But Tim puts on a great show in August there in Tampa. So, I mean, I would foresee myself doing four or five shows, try, you know, and to get yeah. back to the Olympia. Um, if my body allows it, yes, yes, yes. If if there's injury, because I've had some very severe injuries, I have to listen to my body. Mm -hmm. um, but compete, compete, compete is what I enjoy to my... do. And, and for our division, we need it. We need the girls. Like, we have a Facebook group, and we're constantly in that group going, hey, there's a show. Who's going? Yeah. Hey, there's a show. We, we've yeah. got to get the numbers. We have to compete. We have to compete. Yeah. Um, it's such a difference uh, between like fitness and you know something like bikini or figure where they have droves of, of girls you know like they they have so many girls competing in shows they can't even you know accommodate and probably everyone that you know wants to sign up um, and then and then fitness is you know a lot less so yeah right. I can definitely see that for sure but but also because it requires you know a, a much how can I put this in a in a good way without making it sound terrible for the other division? It requires a more athletic, you know, aspect to it. You know, right. it's so that's probably why it's so hard to get more more people, you know, involved in it. Yeah, but and and each year we do have, you know, I think sometimes if you have a small injury, you can still step on stage for posing. Sure, um, sure, and I'm not. You know, like what you're talking about, no one is knocking any other division down. Right. Everybody puts in just extremely hard work. Sure. But the smallest injury can knock you out from doing your routine. So yeah. then that's two thirds of your score. You, you, right. you can't compete. So it's like we had girls competing earlier in the year that now can't compete because they're dealing with a hamstring issue or they're dealing with right. you know, a fracture of some point or of some type or things of that nature. So we do have girls each year where, you know, our numbers may drop off because they hit it so hard at the beginning of the season. And now they they're dealing with some type of tweak or injury. Right. So you mentioned you had some severe injuries. What were they? Yes. Okay. So I have had three ACL surgeries on the same knee. Oh, um, wow. My last one actually came right after I competed in Brazil in 2014. So they told me that it would take me a year to recover from that one because the surgery was so extensive. Um, and that's when we decided to start a family, mm -hmm. um, to, to take the year and, and have a baby yeah. and yeah. really just kind of use that year to recover. Um, but if I, if I hurt that knee again, I'll have to have it re completely replaced. Um, there's no car. What, what, what caused it? What caused the injury? Tumbling. Okay. So, yeah. All, all three of my surgeries on that same knee have been from tumbling, doing a twisting in the air. So when I landed, my feet planted, but my upper body was still moving, um, which caused my knee to buckle to the inside. Yeah, that's 
oh, that just just you hearing or talking about it or me hearing it sounds it sounds excruciating. And yeah. if anybody's ever you know had like even just a minor injury with their knee, it's it's pretty devastating. The only thing I could think of that's just as bad besides knees is uh, back. Like when people will get their back hurt, it's right. that can be kind of devastating as well. I, I agree with you. And where a lot of us that are competing in the Olympia are dealing with stuff right now. Like I, I visit my chiropractor once a week. I have a SI joint mm. that likes to slip out on my left side. Um, mm. So as and my glute men over there are a little bit weak from it. So there's, there's maintenance that you're constantly having to do um, sure. for, for your body as well. Um, I've got an AC joint issue. I've got um, a torn labrum in one shoulder. So, there, everybody's got something yeah, that yeah. they're dealing with. Yeah. It's do you just, do? I don't, I, uh, you ahead. try not to talk about it because you don't want anybody feeling sorry for you because you're, right. you're obviously doing it to yourself. But yeah. Well, yeah, it's not, and it's not even so much feeling sorry, but that's just part of athletics. I think I think if people are uh, wanting to get into it, um, they should know that you know, one, they should know it's possible to be injured, and two, what can they do to you know to help recover? I think I think people need to hear that. Right. So, so besides chiropractor, do you get just regular massages, or you just go to the chiropractor primarily? I do chiropractor, I do regular massages, I do deep tissue massages, Mm -hmm. Um, I also do stretching massages, and then um, cryotherapy, Mm -hmm. um, which has been, which has been huge for recovery for me. Yeah. How do you like, uh, how do you like cryo? Oh, no. Okay. How do you like the cryotherapy? I love the cryo. Uh, Time management, it's amazing. And the fact that I grew up putting two or three bags of ice in the bathtub and sitting yeah. there for 15 or 20 minutes. Cryo is huge. If you can hit that um, in three minutes, um, it really helps my legs recover. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. It, you, has been, it has been a game changer for me. So you definitely feel the difference. I was thinking about getting getting into that, uh, but you say you think that that's, like, really made a difference for you? Yes. I'm huge with it. So okay. I love cool. it. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. So how how many years do you think you have left in competing? Like would you have a time where you want to retire or or are you just going to go until you know your body basically says no? I'm going to go until my body says no. Okay. I, you okay. know I do I do get the question on if we're done building a family and I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Um but if I've done it once and it only put me out for a year, I can do it again. Sure. Um but I do want to make sure that my timing is set up right for that. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm, I'm in a good run right now. I'm, I'm doing really well with my competition. My husband respects that. My family respects that. So it's not, it's not in the near future to have another little one. Yeah. Um, but we want to, and I don't want anybody to think that, that that's going to stop me from, from sure. competing because sure. I, I'm 33 and we've got girls in our division that are in their late forties, early fifties. And if my body allows it, I want to do the same. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I mean, I think it's very well possible as long as, you know, you keep uh, making sure that you, you stay with the massages and the cryo and the recovery and all that. And I, I think you, you know, you can do it for a very long time. So I agree. Um, my yeah, my yeah. brain stays young, you know? Yeah. It, it stays yeah. so young until something here is like, oh, hold up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I complete I completely understand. I'm I'll be thirty five in a few in a few months. Uh, and uh yeah, it's definitely like things that I think I can do in my mind sometimes, like i can feel that later that oh that feels different than if i would have done it when i was 20 you know right. still can still can do it is just is just there's there's a little more more uh a aching involved yeah. in it so I, um, I feel your pain yeah. on that one yeah <laughs> so um do you have you ever considered and i don't know if they even allow this but uh, have you ever considered competing in another division since you're so close to figure? Do you think you could do both, like do a show in figure, do a show in, you know, fitness in the same year? You know, I, I personally probably would not only mm-hmm. because I compete for the fitness round. I mm-hmm. love that so much because of the adrenaline that it brings. 
and I okay, think from sure. my history of gymnastics and um, cheerleading and things of that nature, it's that that performance factor is mm-hmm. so different to me. Um, you know, the the bikini round when we get in our suit for comparison makes me absolutely nervous. Um, oh, really? Wow. That's where that's where I feel. I have to work on my mindset because that's where I could get uncomfortable yeah. in a heartbeat. Um, I love performing. So mm-hmm. I don't foresee myself ever swapping over. Now, if an injury prevented me from doing the routine round, because I do enjoy the sport so much, I would probably then consider mm-hmm. figure. Right. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. But, yeah, that- but for mm-hmm. now, I just, I love, I love doing the routines. I love what it brings. So. Awesome. So I know you said that you, you do have a full-time job. Do you, do you have work uh, within the fitness industry as well? Do you train? Do you give nutrition? Yes. So I have my, I have my own online nutrition and training business. Um, So I actually personal train some of those women in the mornings. So I, drop my little girl off at school and then I train until a little bit right after lunch. And then I have a two hour break to do whatever I needed to do. And then I coach club gymnastics at night. Okay. Nice. So I have girls from the ages of 10 to 18 and I have the girls that could do gymnastics at the next level. So I have your upper level. Yeah. Goodness. So I travel with them and as they compete and I coach them, I spot them. Um, so that's what I, what I do in the evenings. That's, so that's awesome. Passing down the knowledge to younger yes. generations. Yeah, that's it. awesome. Do you think your daughter will, um, you know, continue in this type of tradition of gymnastics and maybe fitness? She, yeah, I think so. You know, the other <laughs> day, the other day I was posing for some check-in photos and she had to have her a sparkly suit. So <laughs> I pulled out one of my old figure suits and I tied it up on her. It was that's, so funny. That's um, hilarious. She is a little ball of muscle. She is a, oh my gosh, she's a firecracker. Um, yeah. She goes to gymnastics with me a lot. So she awesome. sees what these other girls do. And so she can already do like a forward flip and a handstand. Yeah. And she's in soccer right now. Um, <laughs> you know, we had to have the conversation. If somebody kicks you, don't hit them. They didn't intentionally <laughs> kick you. Um, that's hilarious. Yeah, what? no, I mean, genetics is a thing. I mean, if, if you've got it, and obviously your uh, your husband is, you know, some in some level involved in athletics as well, you know, that she has some good pull from there, so, yeah. from you and him. So, awesome. Um, so, uh, th- you know, again, thank you so much for coming on. We can, uh, you know, wind down. But before we go, if you want to kind of give uh, your – like contact information if somebody wants to contact you for nutrition for you know online coaching um you can go ahead and do that yeah so you can contact me um whichever one that i give you you can go through email which is fit tiff elite at gmail.com fit and tiff flip backwards so there's only one f in tiff to help with that um, mm-hmm. i also have a website which is fit tiff elite.com you can find me on Instagram as Fit Tiff Pro or Tiffany Chandler on Facebook. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Tiffany, again. I know you're driving. Hopefully, uh, you know, you get there safe and get your training in. And I'm sure you'll do well in the Olympia, crack that top five. And uh, I, I won't be at the Olympia, but tentatively, me and my wife are planning to be um, in, at the r in March. So maybe Fantastic. we'll see you there. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm honored. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. You take care. Bye-bye. Bye.